Right, so welcome to part two of lecture seven. And uh, what we're looking at here is how do we do a fit of a physical equation uh, to a generalized function um, uh, to some data. And what I mean here, we've met uh, uh, functions like a power series. So we could write down a power series of x and some coefficients, which we'll call a. And there could be j of them. Uh, and a power series would be a0 plus a1 of x to the 1 plus a2 of x squared plus a3 of x cubed plus dot 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 for uh, j. And, and, and we could in general write that as a j x to the j summed over all j for j equals naught now to n. Um, just wrap that off there. Um, so that's one sort of function. And the nice thing about that is that when we differentiate, all of the A terms are completely uh, what's called orthogonal to each other. They're uninvolved with each other. Here's a, another type of function. Um, here's uh, an f of x. We've met this sort of function before. Equals A over sigma square root of 2 pi um, times x of x minus mu all squared negative over 2 sigma squared plus some constant b. And that's a picture of a Gaussian with a background level b and an integrated area, that area there, of a, a width, a characteristic width where things drop um, of sigma um, and a central location mu. Well, this is x and this is f of x. Um, so that's another type of function. And the, the interesting thing about this function is that it's, uh, uh, if you differentiate it, the a's, the coefficients, that is big A, sigma, mu, and b, are somehow, apart from b, involved with each other. When you, if you differentiate this function, um, the sigmas and so on will be involved. The sigma is here, so that the area of the Gaussian excluding the A is 1. Um, and we quite often want to do that because we're interested in doing things like fitting peaks from diffraction or um, something like that uh, and trying to find the, the center of that peak. Um, and to do this, what we do is we define a uh, thing called chi-squared. And I'm going to write down what that is. Chi-squared of our coefficients a. And, um, so in that case, they were those guys. Um, and we'll say that chi-squared is the sum over all the observed data points, i equals 1 to n, of the residual, what's left, the difference between the observed point and the value of f of x at that point, i, divided by a sigma, and that's a different sigma to this one, I'm sorry, but that's the, the convention, squared. Now, what this is, is it's the residual uncertainty, residual left behind, so if we had some data, um, some data points here for our peak, say it was in the right place, but a bit bigger and a bit wider, each of these terms, this y minus f of x, would be each of these heights. So we're squaring those in the same way as we did before for a residual, because we want negative ones and positive ones both to be bad. So we're trying to minimize the total amount of difference between the fit line and our observations. And we're penalizing those by the uncertainties in each of the measurements. So each of the measurements is at a position x, y, a height y, i. It has an associated uncertainty sigma i. That's our data. And what chi-squared is doing is it's evaluating how good our fit is. When f of x matches y exactly, chi-squared will be naught. And we're doing this for some vector, set, array, whatever you want to call them, of coefficients in f of x um, that's some vector a. 
And what we're aiming to do is pick our best fitting parameters such that we minimize chi-squared. So we imagine, if say I had two parameters to my fitting function, a0 and a1, and here's chi-squared. Let's imagine that chi-squared is a surface, something like this, that comes down to a minimum over here, somewhere like over here. And we start off with our first guess, our first iteration here. Now, what do we want to do in order to find a minimum? Well, what we always do when we find a minimum is we differentiate and set it to naught because at a minimum, the gradient would be zero. So what we're going to do <coughs> is our normal trick of finding d chi squared by d a j for each of the a j's and set it equal to naught. So if I want to differentiate this, um, what have I got to do? Well, this isn't a function of i, so the sum is uninvolved really in this differential. So when I differentiate it, I'm going to get 2, and I'm going to get the sum of i equals 1 to n of yi minus f of x i comma aj divided by sigma i um, and that's going to be squared because it's still there in the squared even though if I differentiate that bit I get 2 times that times the minus sign that comes out from the middle times uh, actually I'm going to I'll leave the bracket here. I'll just put a bracket there. Times df daj. And I'll do that for j is equal, uh, we're doing it for naught to n or 1 to n, however many j's there are in my fitting function. So that I'm then going to set equal to 0. And actually, I can write all those down as a vector of my chi-squares, which we would call the Jacobian, the vectors of the gradients. And <coughs> that's actually a thing you'll meet later in the lecture course called grad. Um, what we're doing is we're finding which way takes us most steeply down the gradient of the function. So that'll have a component in A0 along that way, and a component in AI down that way, um, and that'll be my uh, vector uh, that I'm going to want to go down to get towards this minimum. It's a bit like your Newton-Raphison fit that you did before. Um, and we can go down that vector uh, by any amount we like. We could try and go uh, a long way or a little way. So we'll go by some constant times the vector of d chi squared dA1 d chi squared, d a2, etc. Um, and we call these coefficients, or this vector, uh, beta j. So we're going by a constant times beta j down this vector to go and find the minimum. Now, a more sophisticated approach actually uses the curvature to evaluate what this constant should be, how rapidly you should go down the gradient. Um, and then you make the matrix d chi squared by d a uh, 1 d a 1 and then d chi squared by d uh, sorry d 2 chi squared by d a uh, 1 d a 2 so that's d a 1 squared if you like and so on and so on building up a matrix so d chi squared by d a 2 d a 1 d chi squared by dA2, so D2, D2, dA2, dA2, and so on, building up what's called a matrix of the second derivatives, which is called the Hessian matrix. And if you invert, the theorem goes, if you invert that, pull it over to the other side of the equation, you can find a, a minimization, um, which is what's done in the Gauss-Newton method or the levenberg marquardt method, which is how codes like MATLAB go about doing a fitting. Uh, but at this stage, this is all getting a bit much. So what we'll just do for the time being is we'll evaluate uh, just the first grade derivatives and we'll head down that gradient and show how to do that. Um, so uh, what we'll do in the next lecture is look at how to fit a Gaussian. Uh, the last thing to say is that 
in, if you can evaluate the curvature, that also means you can go and evaluate the uncertainty in the fitting parameters, but we won't uh, go and do that formally in this course, but it can be done. And if you look in your Merkel recipes, um, then it's all there um, in about chapter 15. Your Merkel recipes is, is rather intimidating, um, but it is uh, a very nice book where all of this stuff is uh, laid out in some detail in chapter 15 of Dumerical Recipes, but it's a, a, a good read, and if you ever do need to do this properly, then that's the place to go to understand how MATLAB and stuff work. So that's it for this segment.